Hello, this is Clint McDonald back with yet another Visual Basic tutorial. Today we're going to start talking about a new area and we're just going to do one quick tutorial on this because we're going to talk about generic lists. And so we're going to introduce generics very quickly and then move on. Um, the reason why I'm bringing this in earlier in the course is because we need to be able to use lists in a variety of ways, especially when we start talking about databases and database tools and database definition classes and such. So we're going to go ahead and introduce this now. So what we have is generic lists. So you probably want to do a bit of Googling on generics, but generics are a way of programming languages to perform similar or exact same tasks using different data types and different variety of objects. So for instance, um, according to Microsoft MSDN here, they're saying that a generic type is a single programming element that adapts to perform the same functionality for different variety types. And their analogy here is using a screwdriver. So one of the thoughts that you have to have is no matter what type of screwdriver you need to use, the way you tighten it or loosen a screw is exactly the same. You either use a ratchet or you turn the screwdriver. And no matter what you do with it, you're either going to turn it clockwise or counterclockwise to either tighten or loosen that screw. So it doesn't matter whether it's a slotted, crossed, or starred screw, no matter how you go about doing it, you still use the same methodologies. And so that's sort of the idea behind generics. So there's all kinds of different uh, classes of generics. And the one we're going to look at today is specifically our lists. So we're going to look at lists of specific. So a list is very similar to an array with the fact with the difference of it not having an order. There's no order or no sorting of it specific. So you can sort it, you can change it, and you actually in fact rearrange the items in the list. So we'll that'll be clear once we get into using them. So we're going to show you how to add them to it, you're going to add items to a list, how to use the list, and how to search through a list to find a specific item. So let's get straight into our tutorial here. So what I've done is I've set up a really quick little form here with a simple list box and six buttons that do specific things. And what that's going to do is I've created a class here with three different kinds of lists. So the first thing you have to notice is that a list is defined by the generic class, or they call it the namespace. So generic namespace and the list subroutine. And then you say of type. So this is a list of string, which is, I mean, if you think about it from an English perspective, it's a list of strings. So it makes sense. And so one of the things that you're going to find is as you're moving forward through your from beginner to intermediate to advanced programming, you're going to find things of I enumerable and I comparable and all kinds of different things like that. But for now, we're just going to say, okay, we're going to have a generic list of strings. And I'm going to have a girls list, a boys list, and then a generic people list. So right away, when we define our new list using a constructor, we're just going to manually add four boys and four girls to the appropriate lists and then we're going to use them in specific ways. So when I push button number one here, what I'm doing is I'm setting the data source for the list box to be boys. And basically what that does is it sets the data source to nothing because you need to blank it before you can reset it. And then you set the data source to boys list. And the local class here is essentially just a new instantiation of the class object. So when I instantiate it, the constructor will add this information automatically. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. And I might have the wrong project starting here. Yep, I did. So let me just quickly set my startup form here, properties. Startup form, form two, save, and I'll close that and run. run. Save that. All right, so when we run this, you can see if I set data source to boys, it grabs just the boys list and puts them in there. Now it puts them in in the same order in which they were added to the list. So if I if I go back here, you can see here that the order here is randomized. Like there's no order. Like it's actually already sorted at this point. 
So I can sort them and you can see it doesn't make a difference. If I go to the girls, you can see that they go in and they're already sorted as well. So, and the reason for that is I believe I may have the sorted property turned on and I do. So we're gonna turn that off and now let's run this again. So when I run this, again, we'll bring it up as a list sample here and we'll run this. When we run this, you see that the order in which the items appear in the list are the same order in which they were added. So the first one in is the first one and the last one is the last one. You can then run this sort method on a generic list and I have that by in voice here and you can see that it resorts the list. What that does is in fact if you're comparing it to arrays is that actually changes the index numbers for it so it reorganizes it. You can use index numbers for um, a list. Uh, it's not usually recommended or not usually done unless you want to find the first thing in the list or the last thing in the list type of an idea um, or the top 10 type of thing unless you're wanting a specific number of items in a list uh, you don't typically refer to the index numbers. So then we can set the data sources girls and again you can see that they go in the same order in which they were created and you can sort them. There's a couple more features of a generic list which is neat. There's this union function which allows you to take a boys list and union it to a girls list. Remember those Venn diagrams from, uh, from public school? Or maybe you've learned a little basic SQL so far and you can use the union statement in two select statements. So it's the same thing. A union is taking two lists and adding them together. So this would be the boys list plus the girls list so you'd have eight people. And then the other thing is, is the union actually returns an I enumerable so you need to convert that to a list, okay? So if we go back to our executable here, if we union them, you can see that the lists are already placed in there. Now, also note that the boys list and the girls list have already been sorted, so they remain sorted, but then we need to sort the whole list so that the boys and girls mix in. If we reorder them, you can see there, Liz and Mohammed re uh, reiterated. So if we close that off, start that again and then we say union you can see they're in the same order from which I added them from the add statements here so you can see they're in the same order so if I now sort them they sort alphabetically by uh, the item listing so that's a basics of lists you can just basically add things now remember that lists don't necessarily need to be a list of strings you can have a list of class objects. So if we go back, and I believe if I'm rem remembering correctly, it was tutorial 15 where I introduced you to class to classes. So tutorials 15A and 15B, where we had R2D2's Droid Factory. So if I close these forms down and set my default form back to form one here. I can show you that I've rewritten the droid factory just slightly here. So remember this is what we had and we had introduced you to classes and then we made to populate this list box we created an array of droids. And now I'm going to show you how we can do the same thing but as a list of droids. So if I go into form 2 here and not sorry form 2, form 1. If I go into the Form 1 code here, I can show you some of the changes that I made. So before, we had to have a current droid number because we had to know which index number in the array we were using. So we don't need that any, anymore because a generic list has no length. It only has its current length. There's no maximum or predefined number of indexes that you can use. You can just keep adding them until you, the cows come home. and it will just keep working. And also if you're iterating through them you can use a for each loop and that will allow you to say a specific number. So we got rid of the current droid number. We replaced the array declaration with a declaration as a generic list. So then we don't have to pre-populate it. A generic list can be empty. It doesn't have to have anything in it. So we want it so we got rid of the pre-declaration in the form load event here. Then what we did is when we're 
displaying the droid. The only thing we had to do here is we had to put this inside a try catch block because if there is no current droid sent in or the current droid is null or nothing, then this would fail. So we had to put that inside a try catch block. Obviously, we need some catch code there. I'm not doing it for the tutorial, but you would in uh, commercial software. So then in the save here, what we did is we got rid of using the array with a current index number, and we just simply said droids.add the current droid. And that's really simple to do. We also no longer are going to add items to the list box. What we can do is we can just reset the data source for the list box over and over and over again. And again, we don't need to increment the droid number. So if we go to set to this de uh, definition, it's right here. So we set the list box data source to nothing. We set the display and value member. We always need to do that for both list boxes and combo boxes. And then what we did is we set the data source. Now the display member, this name has to be exactly spelled correctly with respect to the property name. So if I go to the droid class, this spelling of that property right here needs to be spelled exactly right uh, in the display member value member. And then you just simply set the data source equal to the generic list. So that's fairly straightforward. Um, and then what we had to do is if we're going to display the droid based on the selected index, well our selected index is only the droid designation, not the droid itself. So in order to display the droid, which as you can see requires droid to use as droid, we need to send in a droid, but we only have the designation. So I wrote this little quick function right here, which iterates through the list using a for each loop right here. So for each D as type droid in the list of droids, if the droid, the temporary droid dot designation equals the designation we're looking for, then return value equals D. So we're returning the droid. So this is sort of um, back to uh, the very first Star Wars where Obi-Wan says, this is not the droids you're looking for. So that's sort of the idea here, that when you are looking for a very specific droid, you can iterate through the list of all the droids until you find the one that you want. And if the droid you're looking for doesn't happen to be in the list, that's one of the reasons why we need these try-catch blocks, because it would return a nothing value where I set the initial um, droid to nothing right here. So that's sort of the generic idea. So that is generic.lists really, really quickly. So how to search through them, how to use them, where we're adding them to lists. You can sort them as well. You can use the list box property to sort, or you can do droids.sort. Droids.sort is a lot um, more complicated than my boys and girls names.sort was because these aren't strings anymore. These are class objects. So you have to say, which property are you going to sort it by and then you have to do an, a comparator so what how are you going to compare them so if you're comparing strings and it's just an i comparator of string but if it's a different custom type then you need to create custom comparators to in order to sort things because when you sort you're comparing two items moving to the next comparing two items moving to the last com next comparing two items etc so it's really important to have that straight so you might need to watch this, pause it, do this a few times to get this into your head, but give it a try. Thanks.